thing. We're still just riding that wave of how the Lord moved in there. I have all week. I don't know about you. I preached this morning about being being ordered by the Lord, being led by the Spirit. It seems like all week that youth rally, I've just been carried by it just all week. And we just got through having Miss Janie's uh, funeral service in here a while ago and these are some flowers left over from uh, a while ago. They had pictures of her and Brother Ray. And I'm telling you, you get to see people like that that was together 50 years, right? 50 years. That'd be a record nowadays. And uh, their family was all here and, I had some pictures of Brother Ray and Miss Janie. It just brought back a lot of memories. And you know, we're in the greatest work in the world, y'all. I wouldn't trade places with nobody in this world. My life ain't perfect, and there's a lot I'd change if I could. But I'm telling you one thing, I'm happy being what God gave, gave, doing what God gave me to do. I hope you are too. The, the happiest you'll ever be is doing what God wants you to do. The man who's a success in this life is the man that finds out what God wants him to do and does it. You find out what God wants you to do and do it and you'll be happy and blessed. Amen? Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to Psalm 78. Just a little truth here tonight. You already know that I want to sort of reinforce it down here a little bit this evening. Psalm 78, there's a, there's a strange verse of scripture here. And I remember when I first read this scripture, it, I thought, how in the world could that be? Like you do a lot of scripture sometimes. But then as time went on, uh, it obviously, as, as the rest of the Bible, it makes perfect sense. Psalm 78 and verse 40, they were, it was talking about the children of Israel back there in the, in the wilderness and how they provoked him and caused trouble, had trouble. And verse 40 said, how oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back, look at this, and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Is that what your Bible says? These people down here on earth limited the Holy One of Israel? Sure is. I want to preach tonight on the subject limiting God. Limiting God. It almost sounds blasphemous, don't it? We all know that God is all-powerful. He is all-powerful. He is omniscient, knows everything, omnipresent, is everywhere at once, and omnipotent, no weakness in him, can do anything, knows everything, and everywhere at once. That's the definition of God. And he's, he can do anything. He's all-powerful. And yet, the Bible said these people restrained him. They limited him. The word limit means to restrict or to restrain. So how, how could a little man like me or you or us be in a little tiny speck down here on this little piece of dirt called earth possibly restrict or restrain Almighty God? Have you ever thought about that? You know those Google Maps? You've seen them things where they pull out and 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 then finally you see the world and there's, there's uh, America and the ocean and there's South America and everything and then you zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in and it gets down and there's North Carolina and then there's where you live. Look how little we are. You, listen, from outer space you can't even see North Carolina and if you could, me and you are the, a tiny hair of a speck on this and yet a, a human... A frail human being has the ability to limit God. That's awful. It's a thing to think about. Now, some man said one time, he said, attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. According to the Bible, these people limited him. Three ways tonight we limit God and, and we'll go. Number one, I want to say tonight, me and you limit God when we don't trust him. We limit God when we don't trust him. I've got scripture in Mark chapter 6 and verse number 6. The Bible said that the Lord was passing through this place one day and he said these, these people here and they come here and, and these people didn't believe him. They didn't trust him. And you know what the book said? The book said he could do no mighty work there because of their unbelief. It didn't say he chose not to. It said he couldn't. 
And for some reason, God has fixed it so that when we don't trust him, it limits his power working in our life. You know what God wants you to do? He wants you to trust him. He wants you to, it pleases God when we trust him. And it limits God when we don't trust him. So here's the Lord here. He said, man, I could do this. I could do that. I could fix this. I could fix that. But these people don't believe. So I can do no mighty work here. And he went on down the road somewhere. They limited God when they didn't trust him. I would hate to think that I limited God, and I'm sure I have. I'd hate to think I'd do that anymore, limit God by not trusting him. The Bible said all the mighty works uh, that you hear of, you know, as done by him, all the stuff you hear of done on the mission field, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, unbelief, destroyed the world in Noah's day. One man's faith saved him, and of course that was Noah. Uh, the Gideon and the 300, always, always, always. David and the giant. Uh, 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 the, the entire army, when Goliath was over there running his mouth, and the, and, and the Israelites is over here, and David come down to fight him, the, the, the Israelites could have took him, but they didn't trust the Lord. David trusted the Lord, and got the victory over Goliath. You know, God don't fight with swords and spears and bullets and, and guns. God fights by his power and they could have beat that giant but they didn't because they didn't trust the Lord. David trusted the Lord and got the victory. If you're here tonight and you're facing a battle with drugs, you're facing a battle with alcohol, you're facing a battle with some kind of temptation in your life, uh, 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 sexual, monetary, financial, any kind of, of sin, you're falling in to, I tell you what you do buddy you trust the Lord you say Lord I'm trusting you to get me through this I'm trusting you to get me grace I'm trusting you to help me walk I don't want to let I don't want to limit God's power in my life just because I don't trust him amen old David went down there and he said I don't know who that guy is but I'm sick of him cussing God like that I'm going to go over and knock his brains out and he put that rock in that sling and slung that thing around like that bam I mean hit that giant I smack dab between the eyeballs and took his sword and cut his head off. You know how David did that? He trusted the Lord. Muscle wise, Goliath was stronger than David, but God fought his battle because he trusted him, and if he didn't trust him, he would have lost the battle. Years ago, there was an old preacher up in, uh, up in uh, Virginia. I used to preach revivals for him, and he was a man of great faith, and uh, somehow or another, he got the reputation. Somebody uh, couldn't have a baby. Uh, a young couple couldn't have a baby and they wanted a baby and prayed for a baby and prayed for a baby and never could have one. And they went to this preacher and he said, uh, he, he laid hands on and he said, Lord, I pray that you'd give this couple a baby. Sure enough, it wasn't long after that till they come in and said, guess what? We're expecting a baby. Well, somebody else found out about that and they told him about it and they come and they said, hey, are you the preacher that prays for people to have babies that want them. And uh, he said, I sure am. And he laid hands on them and prayed for them. And it wasn't long until they, they had a baby. And he got a, a reputation. Anybody wants to have a baby? Uh, go. I know some people that maybe should go to the preacher and pray, keep from having babies. Uh, but uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but you, you're supposed to have enough sense not to do that. Uh, but anyway, uh, anytime anybody couldn't have one, they'd go to him and they'd pray and they'd pray and they'd pray and they'd pray and, they'd pray and Sure enough, uh, and he sort of got that reputation. I don't know if he had any kind of special, special gift or touch or whatever. And so uh, I thought, well, I'll try that. And this girl uh, and her husband come to me years ago at youth camp, and they said, "Will you please pray that we'll have a baby?" I said, "I sure will." We got down, and I said, "Lord, I pray that you'd bless this couple with a baby. If it could be your will, Lord, we're asking in Jesus' name." And I forgot all about it. It wasn't long after that. Uh, several months went by, they come, preacher, you ain't gonna believe it. Right after that, uh, we, we're, we're having a baby. We sure are. Uh, Chris, and my, my middle daughter, Chris, her and Jeremy, you know, they prayed for years and years. Finally, big T come along. And I'm telling you what, brother, I, listen, we limit God when we don't trust him. We limit God when we don't give the door. People, have, have you... 
Have you checked your Bible lately? We, we do serve the God that made the whole universe and is able to do everything. He's able to do anything. We limit him so much. Well, I know he loves me, but I, I got a big problem. I don't care how big your problem is. I don't care how mean your mama law is to you. I don't care, brother, how, how, how wild your kids have got. I don't care, brother, how much your bills are. You trust the Lord and say, God, I know you're able and you live right and serve him. He'll work in your life. He'll work in your life. I tell you what, brother, you, you, we limit when we don't trust him. Number two, we limit God when we don't pray to him. We limit God when we do not pray to him. God is able. You listen to me? He's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. That means God can do stuff men you can't even think of. Our imagination won't even allow us. I'm telling you, that's a blessing. Now, you say, well, Brother Danny, you, you show me that in the Bible. I, I'll show it to you. You can look at James 4, 2. You can look at other scriptures. And, and we have, uh, he, I'm, I'm telling you, we, we limit God when we don't pray to him. Let me give you a verse of scripture. The Lord told him people one time, he said, you have not because you ask not. That means I would have given it to you. All you had to do is ask, and you didn't ask. Lord in mercy, I would hate to get to heaven and say, Lord, I struggled here and I struggled there. And the Lord said, all you had to do is ask. Look here what I was going to do for you. Now look, if you ask and don't get it, you ain't lost nothing. But what's wrong with us asking? There's nothing wrong with a sincere, earnest prayer to God for what you need and desire in your life. Hey, we're his children. My, my girls come to me have all their life and, and a lot of times this has happened. They'll say, Daddy, can I want this? And I say, no, no, I don't think so. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, if they keep asking, I think I'm going to do that. And they didn't ask, so I didn't do it. That's true. Now, sometimes you just say no right off the bat. Sometimes you say yes right off the bat. And then sometimes uh, you say no, and if they keep asking, all right, okay. Uh, hey, uh, you know, I mean, little girls, it's hard to tell them no uh, when they're that uh, old mean boy. You say, oh, get out of here, you little brat. But, man, them little girls are just hard to say no to. And, boy, I tell you, uh, 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 when, when, we, when we pray to God, when we pray to our Father, uh, listen, people, I, I can't tell you because I feel like it's between me and the Lord, so I can't tell you, but I can tell you this much. I had Pacific prayer, specific prayers answered at the youth rally. I did. Hallelujah. I did. My Father in heaven heard me in secret and rewarded me openly. He heard my prayer. I'm nothing special. I'm no different than you are. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. But hallelujah, I laid in that prayer closet and I prayed, ask her. I mean, there's a many nights. She said, you coming to bed? Nope. You coming to bed? Nope. I was in that prayer closet and I laid in that one night. You know, we didn't have an all night prayer meeting so I decided I was going to have my own all night prayer meeting. With y'all or without y'all. I was the only one stayed most time last year anyway. And so I said, I got down and I prayed 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 and I prayed. And I'm telling you here tonight, God answered my prayers specifically. Sure did. I got to thinking, you don't want to be selfish, but there's nothing wrong with asking God for what you need. Especially if it's for his glory. Man, I got to thinking in there today when I was preparing this mess, do you realize what we could do if, if we had the money? If we had the money, I could use a million dollars and never take one penny of it myself and do what needs to be done around here. We'd finish leveling off this big hill out here and we'd build a building out there that we could have youth events in and a big junior church and camp meeting stuff and feed people and put right, right over there. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Listen, brother, God's able to give us that. 
He's able to give us that. If y'all wanna, if y'all wanna agree on it and ask him, brother, we'll start asking him. He's able. You say, well, we're brother Danny. We're just a little shining light. And we don't have all the kind of money. That's right. But I tell you what, he does. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills, and he's able to give it on somebody's heart to help us to get that done for the glory of God. I'm not asking for a new house. I don't want a new house. I'm not asking for a new car. I don't want a new car. My cars are fine. Ain't nothing wrong with them. They got a million miles all total, just about. Uh, But I I don't care. They run fine. But I would ask him for a place out there for these kids to come and honor him. And I believe that brings glory and honor to his name. Woo! Hallelujah! I believe he can do that. How about y'all? Listen, if he can make the sun, he can do that. That's just a little request. Amen. Had the great revivals of days gone by. Daniel prayed and God delivered him from the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prayed and God got them out of the fiery furnace. Amen. Ask and it shall be given to you. Listen, some people don't, some people, you know, some people don't believe God even heals them. God still heals people. He's in the healing business. You say, well, Brother Danny, I th- you know, somebody told you a lie. I know God heals. He's healed me before. He can touch and heal. There are cases on record where people have had cancer in the neck and stuff, and brother, a bunch of people got together and prayed and believed God, and they went back to the doctor, and it was gone, brother. It was, I'm not talking about a bunch of fake junk, people trying to make money off of it. I'm talking about the God of heaven touching one of his youngins. He's still able to do that. He's still able to help you with the finances. He's still able to help you with a a fiance. He's still able to help you with a, sure he is. Amen. Just be careful what you ask for. You might get it. Amen. I'm telling you, uh, we limit God when we don't pray to him. I'd hate to get to heaven and the Lord said, well, uh, Brother Danny, I was going to give you a building for the kids and you never did ask for it. Okay, I, I put in my request, Lord. If you don't get it, you're still God anyway, but I put my request in. Amen. Amen. You have not because you ask not. What's wrong with asking? Listen, Marty, where is she? Lord have mercy, she's the perfect example of what I'm preaching about. That kid can ask for more stuff in the least amount of time of anybody, kid I've ever seen in my life. She's expert at it. I mean, brother, she can have, can I have this, can I have this, can I have that, can I have this? And you know, we ought to have that attitude toward the Lord. And I'm not, I'm talking about being selfish. I just, he wants us to ask him. He wants us to ask him. It pleases God when we come to him and ask him for what we need. We limit God in our lives. Hey, what do you need tonight? Need your marriage straightened out? You need, you need money? You need sense? You got some kind of physical problem? Some, ask him. Ask him. If he don't do it today, ask him tomorrow. If he don't do it tomorrow, ask him the next day. Ask him for a job. Ask him. We limit God when we don't pray to him. Number three, and I'm done. We limit God, listen, when we sin against him. We limit God when we sin against him. Now this one, I want to show you. I quoted the other two. Turn to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, and look here what he told his people, the nation uh, there of Israel that, that sinned against him. Symbolically, we can, claim, uh, we can transfer this same truth into Christian life in a sense. Isaiah chapter number 59, and the Bible said here, look at verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Now, you say, well, Brother Danny, that's Old Testament. I understand that. But the truth, it represents a New Testament truth that teaches the same thing. We can limit God's work in our life 
when we sin against him. What am I saying tonight? If I live in deliberate sin, if I cheat people and lie and, and do wrong and, and drink and cuss and cheat and smoke dope and drink alcohol and, and, and whatever, whatever, watch stuff on, if, if I deliberately allow sin in my life, I'm limiting God working in my life. Now look, we're saved by grace and ain't nothing you can add to it, nothing you can take away from it, but people, if you think the life you live don't have nothing to do with the blessings of God on your life, you are, you are messed up in your brain. It does, it does it does, it does, it does. The Bible said that we get, we know that we receive what we ask of him because we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. We ought to try to live consecrated. We ought to try to live separated. We ought not, I'm not talking about being a Pharisee. I'm talking about staying away from this world and the trash of this world. You shouldn't talk like them. You shouldn't act like them. You shouldn't dress like them. You shouldn't think like them. There ought to be a difference between them and us as children of God. Say amen right there. I know it's getting vacation time. People, everybody wants to jerk the clothes off. But you keep enough clothes on to keep your body covered up and stay decent and live right and serve God, honor God, pay your tithes, go to church, do what's right. And you'll limit God in your life when you deliberately sin against him. A man who's not saved is not lost because God wants him lost. He's lost because he refuses to let God save him. He's limiting God. When we get sin in our life, his ear's not heavy. He ain't gone deaf. He ain't, he ain't moved. People say, well, where's God? He's the same place he's always been. Where are you? Where are you? Like the old man and woman, you've heard me say it many times, driving down the road like this on a country day. And he's sitting over here just driving down the road, bored out of his mind. And she's sitting way over here looking out the window. About that time, a little fast sports car goes, wrong, and goes around him. A man's got his arm around a pretty girl, and they're smiling and talking, going like that. And that old woman looked over him and said, I remember when we used to sit like that. And he looked over and said, I ain't moved. Just kept it driving. Scoot on over here, honey. Yeah, that's what he meant. Amen? And listen, God ain't the one that's moved. We have. We have. God's the same as he's always been. Remember when you used to shout? I remember some of you would throw up your hands, cry during the singing. Oh, hey, God ain't moved. God ain't moved. Your sins have separated between you and your God. Amen? I stopped the store one night. It's been years ago. I was coming back from Alabama and I was coming back and stopped at a store in the middle of the night near Atlanta. If you've never stopped at a store near Atlanta in the middle of the night, you, you better be armed and dangerous, brother. I'm telling you, I mean, it's, it really is scary. And I went in there at one of these places and I got gas, went in to pay for it. And the guy that was running the store said, I see all them stickers on the back of your car, them Christian ones. I said, yes, sir. And he said, how long you been doing this? And at that time, I said 18 years. I said, about 18 years. That was a long time ago. I still got them on my car, by the way. I never have outgrew that. Yeah, we got a bunch of them back there after church for you that are too spiritual. And I said, 18 years. He said, wow. Most people don't do it that long. And I got in the car and left. I thought, one wise. I thought, you know what? The world has come to expect People get saved, get on fire for a little while and then just fizzle out and get lost in the crowd and mix in and don't cause no ruckus. You know, and listen, if you would get on fire for God as you was when you first got saved and all of us would get, Lord, there ain't no telling what God would do. He's up there waiting on us. People say, well, why ain't church no good no more? It ain't him. It ain't, I mean, it ain't got nothing to do with God. He's more than willing. People say, let's beg God for revival. Listen, it's his will. Let's beg God to save so-and-so. It's his will that they get saved. And I do pray for lost people to be saved. I pray for God's power to convict them, but to act like it's all him and he don't want to ain't right. He's willing. It's us that needs to get right. I preached the other Sunday. It was a two-week journey to Canaan. 
It took them 40 years to get there. They walked around and around and around. And Moses went in there and preached revival every year. 35 years in a row. And it's the same crowd doing the same thing, going in circles. Because they wouldn't trust the Lord. I'll tell you this story I'm through. Years ago, there's a great preacher preaching down in Texas, Dallas, Texas, in a big revival. And I mean, God got in, it got thick. You know, like it does in the youth rally. I believe that when we get like it was in the youth rally over our Saturday night and the Lord moves in and everything, right then's when the iron's hot, buddy. Right then when the waters are troubled. I mean, you can see miracles happening in situations like that. And, uh, and, and um, I, I, he, he said people started getting saved and getting right with the Lord. And he said they started to dismiss the service. And somebody jumped up and they said, y- y- you know what? We ought to pray for something. God's real in here tonight. Let's all agree to pray for something. And the preacher said, well, I know what. This lady down here, name a certain street down here, she called me the other day and said her son, who's 22 years old, is lost and going to hell and sick and about to die. Let's pray for him. So they all got down and they prayed for that boy. I don't know his name. Let's just just call his name uh, Joe. Let's call his name Joe. And they all got down and they prayed for Joe. Lord, save Joe. God, save Joe. Lord, get a hold of him. Oh, God, please. And they all prayed. And when they got done... They had such a peace and victory, the preacher said, I'm going to get my Bible and go talk to him right now. So he got his Bible, went across town, found the address, knocked on the door, and when he's coming up the steps, the lady said, oh, preacher, I know your voice. I listen to you on the radio every day. Thank you so much for coming. I never thought you'd come to my house. Appreciate you being here. And he went, he said, where's Joe? She said, he's in the back room. We just had company. Miss so-and-so is over here, and uh, I'll go get him. He's sick. I'll put a pillow out here so he can lay here on the couch and listen to you talk. Please try to get to get, get him, preacher. So she went in the back room and got Joe, and, went, and Joe got down on the couch, and got on this pillow like this because he's too sick to get up. The doctors had, hadn't given him long to live. And he said, hey, I'm preacher so-and-so, and I come to talk to you about Jesus, Joe. And Joe said, okay. He said, I'm going to talk to you about John 3. In John 3, it says we have to be born again. Have, have you ever thought about being born again? And Joe said, yeah, I have. He said, well, have you ever been born again? He said, I think I have just a few minutes ago. And he said, What? He said, Miss Moore, Mrs. Moore was a lady lived down the street that was a part of an evangelistic team and a soul winning group had come to visit him and she'd been in there and went down through the plan of salvation and Joe had just got saved just a few minutes ago. While they was over there praying, God put it on her heart to come and witness to Joe and he said, I got born again. And the preacher said, well, you mean this doesn't happen? He said, yeah. He said, how long ago? Well, he said, about 20 minutes ago. And the preacher went back and said, "Woo, hallelujah. We got down and prayed and while we was praying, God put it on Miss Moore's heart. She went over. Joe's already saved. You say, well, preacher, God, don't. listen, we limit God when we don't trust him, when we don't pray to him. He's still able to do that tonight. God's able, people. Don't be defeated. Don't have this give up attitude. Don't have this attitude. I'm just hanging on. I'm still going to church, but it ain't real to me. No. Don't get like that. Get a fresh glimpse. Get a fresh touch. God's still on his throne. And he's able to work in our life. I don't want to limit him. I'd hate to get to heaven and think he had a bunch of stuff he wanted to do. And I was too dumb or backslid to get it. Let's stand by our head for prayer. She's coming to the piano tonight. I want us to gather around this altar tonight on this little Sunday night in May. First Sunday night in May. And she's playing. And I want us to gather around here tonight and let's pray. If you want to come pray for yourself, pray for our church if you ain't got nothing else to pray about. Pray for me if you ain't got nothing. Pray for our bus ministry. Pray for bus drivers, bus workers. Amen. Let's get in this altar and pray tonight. Amen. Glory to God. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Amen. He's able. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able. We limit God when we don't trust Him. We limit God when we don't pray to Him. And we limit God when we sin against Him. Amen. My, my. The altar's full tonight. Lord, I believe that pleases God. And we pray. Now, y'all pray. Pray for our buses. Pray for more bus drivers. You say, I'm afraid to pray for a bus driver. The Lord might tell me to. Well, you think he's going to hurt you? You think God's going to hurt you? 
If he tells you to do it, you'd be better off. You, you get yourself in trouble if you don't. Amen. Ask him, Lord, what do you want me to do? Give some money, visit, pray, work in junior church. We can use help everywhere. Father, I praise you right now, Lord, for our church. Lord, we do ask you, ask you that you would clean out anything that's between us and you. Anything, wickedness, even stuff we don't maybe not even be aware of. Get it out, Lord. Bless our church. Lord, cleanse our hearts. Lord, I pray that every sin will be got out of our lives. Lord, I pray that you bless our buses. Lord, touch them mechanically. Lord, please, God, help them, Lord, to be run good and, and fixed. And God, I pray that you bless every driver. Give us more drivers. Give us more workers. Lord, give us a bigger bur uh, burden and a better vision. Help us not just to get it over with. Help us, Lord, to have a burden for our bus kids and boys and girls that need Jesus. Have your way in our hearts this evening. God, I pray that you'd give us a, 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 a building over there, Lord, maybe to do stuff with, maybe to have Sunday school and junior church and camp meetings and dinners and, and fellowships and activities. God, that'd be a blessing. Lord, I, I'm asking you for it. Lord, if you'd, if, you'd, if you'd give it, I'd praise you for it. Hallelujah. I'm asking you right now in Jesus' name that you'd give it, if it's your will. If it's not, uh, we, we understand, but if it is your will, I pray you'd do it. Do what ought to be done now. Oh, God, bless Shining Light Baptist Church. Put your hand on it, God, we pray. And we'll thank you for what you do in these days ahead in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Some still praying. Take your time. Take your time. We ain't no hurry. Amen, son.